as much as my trackers are being a butt. Let it be known that you Sheen and Wendy so are, are currently place. bickering like preschoolers in my ears. My friends, let's continue the story. <laughs> the lecturer takes a deep breath. The keys to the academy lightly jingling in his grip. This is it. Teaching by day and continuing his research project. By night, in secrecy, things simply could not be going any better for the lecturer. He goes to... Oh, wait, the door's already unlocked. So he heads inside, and to his first class. My friends, who would like to join me for a lesson in history? Oh, hell yeah. Everyone, I you a fantastic number one. Please follow me. Ultimate battle of Vulcan. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I think that's a spice to suck on. Oh god, that big bug. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're excited to learn history. Cats are notorious for loving history. The ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. That's my favorite. Make sure you can hear me. Yeah. Make sure you can hear Get Tom me. Miller and get him back. Oh, this is out of the oh, way. This is clearly not working properly. Metal, did you want the desk? Mm. I can switch. Tech nerd. Sit here and crash. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tails is just claiming the table. I'm that um, one ah, student that uh, just oh, yeah. class tries to play fire. cool but never has good grades. <laughs> My fellow <laughs> tour guides <laughs> I just thought that. Jesus. are rather slow today. You read Roman numerals, mm -hmm. it's this door. You went down like a long way. I never took Roman. There's no student in every anime. Stop Roman in the whole way. Come to get lost, friend. I'm the anime protagonist because I have to sleep right next to the window. I love this side content. My friends. Here they are. The students. Look at their bright eyes, ready to learn. Look how they sit and wait patiently. It's time to begin day one's history lesson. The lecturer spends his time going over the history of the town of Trista. Two hundred years ago, Trista was a small town with a nearby quarry. They were digging initially for ore, but soon came across strange ancient ruins that had sunk deep below the surface. This caught the interest of certain authorities, and the quarry was declared an archaeological site. Excavation ensued and continued for decades. But one day, a storm brought landslides and floods, and the entire site was buried deep beneath layers of mud and earth. The authorities lost interest in the project, and those who lived here decided to build a schoolhouse. And this Oh, that would be the bell. <laughs> the class has ended. She's late. However, Boring. one girl remains behind as the class files out. Once they are alone, she says there was supposed to be an eleventh student. But being the delinquent he is, he skipped class. 
hoping the lecturer wouldn't notice after being gone so long. The lecturer thanks her for informing him of this delinquency, but now we have upon our hands a small dilemma. His absence must be accounted for, and the lecturer is not one for excessive formalities. He is sure he can find the delinquent, or maybe one of his friends. Perhaps stop by his dorm and find out what's going on. Now, my friends, normally on this adventure, I have all of you decide where we're going. However, as this is a rerun and we are on the way to the good ending, I'm instead going to ask Encephalon, where would you like to go? I see what the fuck? a fine choice. <laughs> My friends, you heard him. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm Jay, man. That scared me. Let's go, boy. That was. I see. I remember, guys. Yeah, that was something. Ooh. No, no, I guys. Yeah, what did he say? Wait. Damn, Nathan. Wait. Another crash. I'm sorry, Sheen, but you're dummy no, no. thick. Wait, can you end the way? There we go. Uh, this one. Ah, this one's uh. Oh, uh, no. uh, oh god. Attention! Okay. Uh, Travelers, due to technical difficulties, I would like you all now to pretend I am a hypercube and follow me to the docks this way. Just make some oh, hypercube. Oh god, I'm right! Oh god, I'm actually. Oh god, I'm actually sitting on someone. My bad. Yeehaw, motherfucker. <laughs> well, running calls for drastic measures, I guess, so we have to we're running. He's not a hypercube. He can run. Big, big book codex um, uh, says good ending now. <laughs> so basically, hypercube alias. I'm a freaking lore here. <laughs> Someone's watched Carrie Shack too much. I'm a freaking blur here. Oh my god, you're scout. Nice hustle, tons of fun. Asian's back. Next time you a salad? Yes. Oh, the doctor. I get you a salad. Cat. Those are some fucked up legs. Oh, that was kind of funny how you. Thank you, Hypercube. This was my first model. Thank you. All hail the mighty Hypercube! Sally! Hey, you are. All hail the mighty Hypercube! Oh, the dog! I'm trying to go behind the other one. Perfectly straight. I love this. Okay, we can only change times day so fast. Eventually, we're going to fly off the planet that quick. That seed. April Fool's Day. My freaking computer is freaking crying itself to death. It hasn't been like this for a while. Tumble your way downstairs. Down here. Quick! Quick! Fall down! The Do something with the piano! Is speaking. Don't be afraid of the stairs. The stairs are more afraid of you than you are of it. The hypertense speaks. There we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, they're afraid of it. What do we have here? The delinquent in question. He is standing right here on this small dock. Fishing, looking rather tense. The way he's casting and reeling, the way he's shifting about on the spot. Something is clearly bothering him. The lecturer descends the steps. He asks the delinquent why he didn't show up to class today. The delinquent replies, rather colorfully, that he doesn't want to talk right now. The lecturer doesn't know how or why, but he has a feeling rather like deja vu. He knows what's happening. I know what's going on, says the lecturer, and he explains his hypothesis. The delinquent 
made some bets involving fishing with some upper-class students, and he lost the bet. Now he's stolen lures and is trying to practice so he can gamble again and win back more money. The delinquent falls silent. The water bubbles past gently. The string of the line is pulled taut, but the delinquent ignores it. The lecturer offers a solution. He suggests that the delinquent join a club. The fishing club, he will receive funding upon joining, which may be enough to pay back the upper-class students, and if he keeps practicing, he could even win further prize money in the club fishing competitions. The delinquent is clearly hesitant, his gaze fixed upon the water's shifting surface. Crickets buzz in the grass nearby, filling the evening air with a soothing drone. Fine, says the delinquent. I'll join your stupid fishing club. Now leave me be. Then the lecturer obliges, feeling very accomplished. My friends, now that night has fallen, it is the perfect time for the lecturer to work on his secret project. But he needs some items before he can continue, specifically a hammer and chisel. He knows where he can get it the art room in the main building. My friends, let's go for a night stroll. This way. What's the serpentine maneuver? <laughs> My friends, I actually suggest not running ahead of me because if a newcomer also runs ahead of me, they may accidentally go ahead of where the tour is stopping. Thank you. I'm sorry. Hi, sir. <laughs> fair enough. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. Quite all right. What are those slowpokes doing <laughs> back in town? Probably found a cool ass store. They feel underdeveloped. Oh, apologies, Trajan. Hold up. They probably got stuck in the river. <laughs> I well, some die. people oh. thought they would be smart and went straight to the hotel. Oh, no, no, no. Follow your tour guide. You never know what's going to change. God, why is there so many? Oh, God, I can see so many nameplates over there. All right, you, this is everybody. Appreciated it. Now, Ether Memento and Equalization. Do you all see them standing here beside me? Please take a moment to turn on their avatars. Fully enabled. <coughs> they are tonight's NPCs, and they will be an integral part of the quest you're about to partake in. I have this one. And I can't favorite it. I don't have that one. My friends, while they sort out their avatars and such. Please listen to the rules of the quest. You have a goal in the academy, and that is the art room. It will save such above the door. But you must make every effort to avoid the meddlesome, pesky, irksome, vexatious academy security personnel. Stay out of the cone of their flashlights. Do not be loud or get close to them. 
and use side doors to help you hide. You are not permitted to teleport during this section. If you are caught, security, the NPCs behind me, will address you by name, or as a group, and escort you back here to the beginning. You must comply. Once they leave you here by the entrance, you may continue your attempts, but do try not to get caught. The number of people caught will be tallied, and it may impact the story. NBCs, please get into position. Friends, are there any questions? Big Book says good ending. <laughs> Why, yes, we do have that in stock. Well, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Your time starts now. Good luck. Okay. Oh, hello. I got a shortcut. Hey, Alizu. Hey, Alizu, you get all of these. Get out of here. You're not allowed. I'm going a long way, cause the thing is over there. Going a long way. Are we supposed to go again? Not who, though. Oh. You're hiding behind nothing. Get the fuck out of here. If I stay... Come on. Come on. If I stay still enough, you won't see me. You're not allowed here. Come on. Clearly, you're not breaking into a school at night, so I don't think you should be here. I don't know. Come with me. I will not, I will like not rat the others out. I, I won't rat them out. I won't. So, uh, where Maybe. are we supposed to be? Our room. Our room. Second floor. Sorry, I don't know where that went. I would... What was that? What was that noise? They see people like three miles away and then they catch like ten other people as they walk past. I don't know. Oh well. I got picked out as I got out the front door. Yeah, me and Honestly I didn't get caught, so I'm not a bit I'm very clean. I just took a shower, actually. Would you like to smell me? <laughs> Where did you take it? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, this is a true bro right here. I'm a true, I'm a true bro, a true friend. I would never let my friends get involved. So I will gladly, I will gladly be caught if it means no one else getting caught. That's what it means. You're just to be friends. Always here. I don't think so, actually. Oh, are you talking about these? No, these, these were, uh, yeah, these were all, like, optional, like, uh, game objects I didn't have in the map before. I see. Oh, Thank you, Metal Man.
It's pretty great. Wherever I go, you're not there. This reminds me of Breath of the Wild right here. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, I get that. Put in here. That's so much better. Take a chair. This is alright. Okay. My art is beautiful. It is. Thanks, Ren. Thanks for your awesome work. What a The frame rate didn't help me out in any of this fucking situation. What a legend. I call it. Three people standing on the edge of a cliff. It makes beautiful. I basically just shut. I basically. I basically just fucking. I fucking. I basically just speed ran the whole entire way. All of a sudden, you're not so. I saw you. I can't tell. I completely panicked because my low for rate. Come here. Come here. Come here. This. Look. Wait, wait, what? I'm trying to kill my dad. Oh, I didn't see him there. He's drawing my dad. He's white. Oh, and over here, I have drawn my dad. He's white. No. She did look extremely <laughs> similar. Wobbly, wobbly, tiny, wimey. How about that? It really makes you think. That's good song. Can't you see that? Can't you see that? No, that's, that's, that's racist. I, I've never you played just, the you game, just said that but they look I the same because they look the white. The that's that's the racist, the Mel. Mel. That's racist. Mel. 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 Yeah, so... Well, Say that, man! Uh, it's a dirty door! That's an assault uh, door! door. Right. I'm gonna cancel you on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The, nice. the, the spin-off with Platinum Games, too. Okay. I'm gonna send you a court sum a summons to your home. <laughs> <laughs> to my home. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that yeah, no, I've mm -hmm. not really played any of the Metal Gear games. <laughs> It's yeah, Metal Gear Rising is really cool. It's sound? more um an action game than it is a stealth that game, but I had a lot of fun with it. I really did. Yeah. Oh no, that's a yeah, that's oh, wait, 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 wait. Like, uh, I like what was it? Uh, I've seen, seen amount of oh, uh, what the inside of the school is bigger than how it is in the outside. So, oh yeah, definitely. Unfortunate. So, actually, I think actually oh, yeah, that's a boss. It's bigger yeah, than the yeah. inside. No. <laughs> uh, no, what was it? Time or no. science makes this, uh, this cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm cool. Cool. <laughs> that, that is Jetstream Sam. Oh, oh that's Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't be a Kresik. No. Stop that. Kresik. Kresik keeps asking me for NPCs. Yeah. 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 Don't do it. Huh? Only deal with your laptop. Don't do it. The outer field. 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 Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not for long, actually. Yeah. 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 You should do it. I'm gonna do it. Lecture and you can run it at any time. Film it while you do it, man. I was. I already knew I was a bird. It's my response to a lot of Congratulations, you're a bird. When I see something I don't like, I'm sick. Not anymore. Yeah, bird. You saw what you did. A bird, a bird, a bird, a bird is the word. Different dialogue choices. And the bird no more. Basically, like, story line, plot, trigger stuff. It was actually an Rehabilitated bird. Like a unicorn. Don't patronize me. Literally, pick the other stairs. There's three to choose. Nah, Do not insult my birds. Oh, it's fine, though. Don't worry. Ah. <laughs> I like birds. You are a Joshua. I was looking for my mom at the time, and I missed part of the rules. I, I, was, looking I was looking for a um, uh, Cold Steel right, character no, that would actually fit. No worries. Sadly, only, oh. sadly, I've only been able to actually find the 2.0 version. My friends, it appears oh. we're all here. Your yeah. attention, please. Now, tonight's NPCs, equalization hit the memento. Equalization, you first. How many people did you catch? I caught five. Ether memento? I caught 
Two players and one tour guide. Who's the team? Red with the five plus Red two plus, the... plus one <laughs> equals zero. Very good. Well, <laughs> yeah, as usual. Yo, oh, let's go. Yo, we're so good. Big book says good ending. Tour math. Oh, yeah. Wait, we have a book. My friends, Thank you, we're here for a hammer and chisel, are we not? Yeah, on this little table. Hammerage? This will do just I, uh, nicely. Hammerage? Hammerage? I have these. The lecturer <laughs> is teaching art here tomorrow anyway. No one's going to Hammerage? notice they're missing. And besides, he's merely borrowing them for a short while. The lecturer was about to start heading to his old office on instinct. But then he remembers. Ah, oh, he was given that a room at the inn. At least until they sort out his new office space. It's been a long day. The lecturer is greatly looking forward to lying on a soft and comfortable mattress, to being whisked away by pleasant dreams. Let us go now to the inn and get some rest. Please follow me. Let's go. Oh, one of these times. My favorite night for one reason. Uh, mm. It's taco night. No. Damn. Oh. Lying, huh? Is this a scenic Yo, Peter, I need present. Enjoy the scenery while you're doing it, though. It's a good thing to do. Yep. Smart. It's the good thing Neat. to do. Moment. <laughs> that was a great that was a big book. Big, book. big book says good ending. <laughs> it's the good thing to do. Hey, Nick, is this map from like a game or something? Parkour. He's giving us the slip. Parkour. <laughs> parkour. This map is from Trails Trails of Cold Steel. I think parkour. the third one. Modern World Topping Adventures. I looked at that guy and I immediately thought, I'll Eskimo? trail your Cold Steel. <laughs> nah, he's that smart. sounded mildly <laughs> threatening. This oh yeah, everything. I thought you were just metal. Oh wow, y'all are just, oh, wow, are just, just right sword. there. Hi. I see. With blade so. in hand. You will be ah, the, spy the spider's right at it again. You deny your weapon, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, Not even a spider. <laughs> yes, that one too. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty brilliant. Ah, yes, I'm running a tour. My friends, <laughs> I would like. <laughs> oh, yes. You're Who are these people following me? All of us just stopped the Almighty Cube. Wait, wait. I didn't use bullet time this time. But sure, Jim, you were gonna say. All did it go through my mind? It was the snapback to a reality. Oh, the ghost gun. <laughs> my friends, I would like a volunteer who can speak, please. Make a noise. Ah. Uh, uh. Captain uh, Panda, I heard no, you Captain. first. Hi. Come hither. Hello, hi. I wish I could yes. point, but I end up breaking my That was an eventful day. No. Yes. Yes, very. So, would you summarize today's events? What seemed important? What do you think we need to remember? So, we had uh, we had taken our first lesson, where we had very, very excited students who were very thrilled to see us, except for one. And then we hunted him down. And then we found him. And then we told him to join a fishing club. And then oh we God. broke into then we broke into a school and we borrowed a, a set of tools. These and we're here now. 
Yeah, sure. They, Hunted they down. Sure. Broke into. Interesting Very choice words. of Very words. Strong words. Well. Yes. I think. That's quite good. Thank you. <laughs> Big book says good ending. <laughs> Beetle? <laughs> My friends. We all. The Beatles. Shiny green beetle. Shiny. Day two of three has now commenced. Do you know how we know? It's because the lecturer is woke. And by the sun striking his face through an open window, what time is it? Did he sleep in? Oh no, he cannot be late for his second class. The students are counting on him. Quickly to the art room, my friends. Yeah, Put the bread in uh, the mouth and the toast and the... It's time to zoom, the boys. <laughs> quick, quick! Zoom! Quick, it's like one of your, um, uh, whatever show me anime. <laughs> Teresia. Don't forget to zoom. So oh, for it, run! Man, it's like waking up at 6 a.m. in high school. Oh. Zoom, zoom. Oh no, I'm just bringing my cover. Oh. Run! Spin, 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 spin. Bro. We aren't gonna be late tonight. Run, 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 run. What the fuck? That um, you sped up a little bit. Don't run into you sped all right. A little, all right. Sped up a little bit. All right. Yeah, I'll, run <laughs> <laughs> I'll run slowly. I'll run slowly. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm invisible, you can't tell if I'm running, running or walking. Running. Ah. And then there's a rat statue. Oh, I love the I love the statue. Cheech, I have a question. Very lifelike. <laughs> Ooh, blinks. Look at that. <laughs> the armor is great. I love it. Is the is the encephalon a big book? Rat king. It's Baby, it's Woo Baby. Is there it's Woo Baby. A big book. Yes. I think after the story ends, you should go to the bar and ask that to the bartender. Yeah. Bartender? Right on right. time. Okay. We have a couple of stragglers. One minute, my friends. Be our resident lighter, right? Mm -hmm. And now we Hmm, dried bananas. I should remember to actually look through like the tail like the mud trails of cold steel models and next try to like um, like make a new version of this one. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if this is ever gonna be updated. Uh Krushik hasn't been updating his models He's in a while high. actually. Ah. He wants well, the Kuro and Okuseki models, but they, they haven't the second round, I'll need been able to get, again. like, models for that game yet, so... No worries. Uh, I still have the GitHub really... link you sent me, like, a while ago. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. I, I mean, just need I to remember that. Models, oh, yeah, I hide it. All rigged up? I'm because well, I forgot well, if they were rigged up or not. They're rigged. They have, they have like weight why. painting already done. Like the games, <laughs> like bones and whatnot. <laughs> like they're already done with the games rig. But like um, rigged up for VR uh, chat, you'd have the the like you know, move some bones around and whatnot. Mine. Uh, I didn't see that. Your attention, <laughs> please. I, I get... Oh. <laughs> Go cube. Give us your knowledge. Yeah, they are. That's what happens when you leave your neck on the floor. The students. <laughs> look at their keen eyes. Ready to discover. Look how they sit and wait patiently. It's time to begin day two's art lesson. And look at the back of the class. The delinquent has decided to show up. The lecturer could not be more proud. He begins the class with today's topic. Anthropomorphism. It is when humans apply human qualities to things that are not human. For example, look here at this carved rat. 
I'm on anthropomorphism. Thinking your house pet experiences complex emotions like pride and shame is anthropomorphism. Attributing a vengeful quality to the weather or environment is anthropomorphism. Combining human and animal characteristics to create hybrids is anthropomorphism. A child playing with their toys and giving them personalities is anthropomorphism. And the gods. Do the gods experience emotion? Are they so burdened as we on this mortal plane? Do they hear our prayers and feel pity? Do they feel contempt? Do they feel indifference? Do they even feel? Or are they as forces of nature, uncaring, an eternal ripple of cause and effect in the, in the ethereal realm, the astral plane, <laughs> influencing our lives down here from afar. No. The answer is no. Let me tell you, the gods are selfish, the gods are cruel, the gods are all-powerful, and we must fear them. We must do as they instruct oh, us. No. Well, they will come down and punish us. Can't we just oh. shoot them? Excuse me, I got a bit carried away. That was the bell, anyway. The lesson is ended. <laughs> Lesson's over. Next, next lesson, we're gonna yeah, teach how to kill gods. One student <laughs> remains behind <laughs> as the class files out. Mm -hmm. Once they are alone, the lecturer approaches her and asks, "What's wrong?" She looks up, her face filled with sadness, and she says she feels invisible. The lecturer asks what she means, and she explains that her parents seem to be ignoring her recently. She doesn't even want to be at home, so she's staying with a friend. Another girl in the class 7 dormitory, room 303. The lecturer thanks her for confiding so in him, and says he will try to speak with her parents, perhaps. She leaves. My friends, upon our hands we have another small dilemma. The lecturer simply cannot let his students go through such things unnecessarily. So he knows that her family lives in a house by the docks, and that her father is the groundskeeper for the academy. As before, normally during this adventure you will be asked collectively to name a place, but as we're on the part of the good ending, Encephalon, what do you say? Good ending. Why is it not? Why is it not? <laughs> I see. Hmm. It has been, well, it has, it has spoken. You heard her, him, it, them. <laughs> you heard the being. Big so book. Friends, Big book says good ending. Please follow me. Why Don't run indoors. Run. Fun fact: out the frame and cephalon is another term for the brain. Yep. Oh. Big I've got so big, big book. books. Got it. You've got Ye big books. <laughs> We've uh, got big books. So. She's got yeah. big book. But. Oh, they went that way. Huh? Yeah. What? Oh, I don't know.
Why the hell am I going faster than usual? Oh, here we go. Follow him, follow him, follow him, follow him, follow him. Ah, I'm turning. I am trying to turn, but I... Seen a crowd. Seen a crowd. He's gonna get lost. Uh, 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 Tricky, you're getting ahead. Uh, and then you fool. Uh, Stop while you're ahead. <laughs> so tall. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> this one. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Oh. I had to miss my epi key. And now Three, zero, I can't three. get the hit to. Thank show God up. it's a 404. Oh. That rose has been missing for We're like oh, God knows how long. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh God. <laughs> The lecturer reaches the Class 7 dormitory building. Both outside That's and inside that. are as grand as it was back in his day. On the third floor, he locates room 303 and knocks politely. A girl answers. The same student who came to him. She wears an expression somehow both expectant and defeated. We're missing a cyber. The lecturer. Somehow. Knows what's happening. Like deja vu. He knows what's going on. But he doesn't know why. He says to her, I think I know what's going on. And he explains his hypothesis. The student's mother has become pregnant, but both the mother and the father are acutely aware of a condition in their family that means the baby might not make it. In an attempt to spare the daughter, the loss they will feel if the worst-case scenario comes to pass, they have not told her, and instead made her feel alone. What your parents need, suggests the lecturer, is your love and support, so that whatever happens, you can get through it all together as family. As family. The student is stunned. She is. There are tears on her cheeks. Her words are scarcely more than a whisper, but the lecturer catches them. I might be a big sister. She breaks into a big smile and thanks him so very much for telling her, promising she will do as he advises. And she closes the door, likely sharing the bittersweet news with her close friend. The lecturer, oh, his heart is warmed. He feels very accomplished indeed. And now, time is passing. And whatever bird that was are screaming at us. My friends... This is the perfect time <laughs> to get some more items for his research project. He would like to get some specific medicine, and he needs to get it from the infirmary in the main academy building. Let's go to the academy now. Don't worry, I know how to fix this. We use a sandwich from TF2. Don't jump off the balcony and <laughs> break your legs. Yo, break a leg! That's from the third floor. 100% They mean run off. We don't need no legs. My leg! My leg negate off all damage. My leg! Running like in running like PSL2 New Genesis. Zoom. 
That was not an insult. Birds at it again. I had to turn off like the gestures so I don't accidentally pull out my swords, but now I just feel like I'm from the freaking PSO um, from PSO two where they had no finger bones. <laughs> Congratulations. I thought, I thought the fingers were uh like uh made for that. <laughs> really? I can't really tell. Okay. They're high poly enough that I actually didn't realize. <laughs> Yeah, well, I thought they were weight painted too. I thought you could point with them. Oh no, I mean, no they, they can't, my but, like... friends. Right, right, right. We have another quest to complete. Please make sure you still have the avatars of equalization and ether memento shown. <coughs> Once more, the rules are as follows. Your goal is the infirmary. It will say as such above the door. But you must avoid the nosy, intrusive, snooping, scandal-mongering academy security personnel. Stay out of the cone of their flashlights. Do not be too loud or get too close to them. And use side doors to help you hide. You are not permitted to teleport during this section. If they catch you, they will address you by name or as a group and escort you back here to the beginning. Once they leave you alone by the entrance, you may continue your attempts, but do try not to get caught. We don't want to test the Encephalon's patience. I will be waiting for you in the infirmary. NPCs, please take your position. All right, friends, I got this. I'm going to Are there any questions? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if woodchuck could chuck wood? Can I glue myself to the ceiling and hide and I'm hide away wow. and hide in plain sight? Nice. A whole You second. can start the quest. Your time starts. Friend, you got to be a distraction again. Okay, all right. Sneaky. You suck. Hey. Hey. You. Bug, get out of here. You. You shouldn't be long here. Bug free Damn school. Nothing. Get out. Get out of here. Go. Get your ass in the infirmary. <laughs> For shortcut here. <laughs> hey. Get, 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 get out of here. You're I'm, not I'm going. Here. I'm going. School is closed. Halt. You three. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. Move it, move it, move it. <laughs> Don't pull the gun out. Also been the winner. I was gonna give you a free pass, but now. Now you have been caught. <laughs> Come with me. Are you forgetting you can something? Walk it off. I don't have an ice. Oh no! I I totally know. I literally <laughs> walked right by as he did that. <laughs> it was a distraction. Yeah, nah, it's just. Get in. Just get in. 
Just get in the damn infirmary. How do I get out of here? Come on, come on, you little rodent. Get you, you don't want to find Delta Frame. Okay. You don't want to find Delta Frame. Come with me. Them inside of here. Where were we supposed to go? So the so the I yeah, so can find excellent one in the but... music room. <laughs> I got caught one. Hey yo there. You do not belong here. Hey yo, baby. Yo, come we we are already at the door. For hey, my saw you, Delta Frank. <laughs> and you too. Hey. <laughs> Why is everyone throwing themselves at me? Stop! Ooh, teeth. Hey, yo, tell the friend. From Mark! Get out of here. <laughs> yo, they got tea in here. Too much. Hey, chill out there, Trajan. I know you love Jean. But... Medicine. Come on, guys. Do it. No, no, this is teeth. <laughs> medicine. No, that ain't medicine. It's tea. Don't say that. Pinky boo. <laughs> Fucking. Ah! Pinky boo. Coffee VR, I swear. Get. 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 America. <laughs> Big books has good ending. <laughs> Dre Jim, I'm afraid you have been caught. It is past curfew and you must come with me. That's you. Those oh. pesky, pesky <laughs> security workers. Whatever those security guards say. <laughs> Trajan, the book says good ending. It's okay, Carl. Chew. Chew. is happening again. It's something. Just remember. Look, uh, every time I see big book says uh, big book oh, says no. bad so, ending, I can't read it. Uh, it seems like everything's Wait, empty, empty my friends. You're pretty <laughs> cool. Down. Sitting here at this desk. Mm. With these books and that yeah, cup so of tea. The appear clear to me. We are missing one. <laughs> I know. No, I don't know. Do we are missing one out there. You think the you're the boss man? You think? Little chip. You think you're pretty cool, don't you? Yeah. Slams yeah. desk. On, yeah. Shame yeah. If you're yeah. really the boss, yeah. answer this question. This is not. What is the square root of ten? Answer this question. We're continuing the story. It's three. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are continuing the story. Question. Yup. Yeah. Like 3.215 or something like that. Now, my friends. Yeah. Ether, meme, and two. How many people <laughs> did you catch? <laughs> my memory seems to be fuzzy. I want to say. Four? But I I can't remember. I think it's zero actually. Ah. <laughs> I see equalization. What about you? Four minus four. Oh, okay. Yeah. I knew I knew oh, my young uh, my big big book says good ending. Four ending four which technique would work? Is <laughs> exactly. Delta, you're talking in class. What's the answer? Zero. Correct. Under pressure. pressure. <laughs> My friends, oh, what are we here for? Ah, oh, yes, medicine. Mm -hmm. Just here. This will do just nicely. The doctor here has so much, he won't notice one bottle missing, will he? No, of course not. And besides, the lecturer. Needs it more than the doctor ever will. The lecturer thinks again of the big old bed he used to have here, but remembers once more that he was given that little room at the inn. It's been another long day. The lecturer has grayed looking forward to lying on a soft and comfortable mattress, 
to being whisked away by pleasant dreams. My friends, let's all go back to the inn together and get some rest. Let's all go to the lobby. Don't, don't, don't the mind the spider. I also stole their um, uh, green and red and blue herbs. Mm. I'll steal this. <laughs> Earth, wind, fire, and air. This is good for your health. Remember, no ration. Good for no uh, peace. I can't think of anything else. Somehow got ahead of everyone. <laughs> No thought, Tim. How's business, Ben? Boing. I would like to have water. <laughs> Give me your finest water. None of those carbonated shit. <laughs> they taste weird. Okay. Tastes like carbon. Carbon. <laughs> ah yes, may I have your carbon water, soaked in soaked in carbonated carbonated chicken. This is sparkling <laughs> water. Well, it's with chicken. Just smile. Panchik. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Delta frame gun boyed. I will like the first time. a volunteer who can speak. Ah. Ether. You You're an NPC. You I'm actually going to skip you. So day else. <laughs> <laughs> Delta frame, that was a noise. Sorry. But I've already asked you a question, <clears throat> so I'm skipping you. Someone else. Who? Who is that? It was me. New York oh, Happy. Yep, yeah. yeah. hello. Well, I have a very simple question for you. Okay. Assuming you did your homework, what was the answer to 14C? Oh no! Um, 42? <laughs> 42? Good answer. You Is that a good answer, friends? Did he get it? Uh, I think so. I mean, it's the answer to the universe, the life, and everything, so. Exactly. You're all wrong. Because that's a trick question. One your first time. Nigh happy. My actual question is. What seemed important today? Would you please kindly summarize today's events for the rest of the call? Oh god. <laughs> Sorry. Um paying attention. Dull thing? Okay. So starting at Sorry, my brain's kinda of all jumbled. Um, um There was a kid. We went the lecture went to Sorry, ADD. Um, every the lecturer went to the school wall. Um, and someone missed class, skipped class, and we tr tracked him down, her down, them down. Um, God, and then we broke into the school. Well, that's kind of a weird word, but, um, and we got, oh, a hammer wrench. 
and then we got then oh, wait damn it and then we went to one we caught them going fishing and they joined the fishing Jesus. club <laughs> and then oh, sorry and then um they oh yeah they what's the word uh, sorry um they oh yeah mm. <sighs> sorry i can't do this yeah you got this you got uh, this I, sorry my brain's all become bobbled um i forget what happened after <laughs> Oh no. Something about oh, no. <laughs> went to the dorm mm -hmm. and she's gonna be an older sister or something like that. And then we went in and sold medicine. That's all I remember, I'm sorry. No, I'm happy. Then it's we came back here. Please, there's no need to apologize. You okay. went above and beyond. As a newcomer, you just summarized the entire tour so far. That is very Thank impressive, you, my friends. That deserves a round Thank of applause. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, and I'm happy. Excellent work, Arcs. Thank you. That was very good. Yes. Well, very good indeed, my friends. What happens next? Ah, yes, sleep time. I'll sleep in the stove. <laughs> However, until I hit you now. Day three of three has now commenced. For the lecturer wakes up with a start as sunlight strikes his face through a part in the curtains. Oh no, not again. He cannot be late for his third class. The students are counting on him. My friends, to the music room, this way, quickly, but don't run indoors. Quick, grab the baguettes! Don't jump, the don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> don't jump on the balconies when I'm a kid. Grab the baguette! Why did I treat this like it was? Oh. <laughs> I've actually seen cats, like, literally jump off of buildings before and just be fine. Oh yeah, they're because their term of per term of velocity is less than. I've the, seen uh, you jump three stories so. Yeah. Yeah, the terminal velocity. They also too. use their tails like, to generate. Someone can uh, launch a squirrel out body. of a cannon and pierce it through your chest, and the squirrel. <laughs> I just hit my head, and I just hit my head at the door for. I got this one. Play the shitty rendition of um, uh, the Titanic music with just with just a G minor. Play one. Hey, oh. Shit. <laughs> Is my Find a seat, friends. Fun. Find a seat where you can hear me. <laughs> Thank you, Chess. No vaping in class, please. You did great. Spiders are bad. <laughs> My friends. Here they are. The students. Look at their curious eyes, ready to actualize. Look how they sit and wait patiently. It's time to begin day three's music lesson. Sheen, put your arm down. Ah, but look at the back of the class. The delinquent has decided to show up once more. The lecturer is impressed. And here, at the front, the student from yesterday, 
she wears an expression of joy and it brings warmth to the lecturer's old heart. The lecturer begins today's topic with an excerpt from a book. Quote, Music is a mysterious thing. It can make one remember things long forgotten, moments one may have wanted to remember or wanted to forget. This music belonged to me. It reminds me of a woman far away from here. Hence the name of this song is Far Away Promise. As these notes play, I realize I do not know the woman's name. I do not even know what she looks like. All I know is I must find her. End quote. These words are embedded into our history along with all the others who lived and died in the distant parts. And these are the words of... Uh, where did I put it? These are the words of... Uh, these are the words of Abel of Lahan Village. Yes. But... I hear you thinking, where is Lahan village? Who is Abel? You will not spot it on any map. You will not read about him in any history book. For I did not learn of him from any text. The time he existed in is too far in the past. It's too far away, long forgotten. I was told of Abel and of Lahan by something I met. You see, oh, I should be careful not to say too much, students heed my words. The gods are real. There are beings out there with power you cannot even imagine. You cannot hope to defy them. You... Oh, oh. God damn it. There's the bell. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean to frighten you. And uh, today's class instantaneously terminates here. But one pupil remains behind as the class files out. Once they're alone, the lecturer approaches him and asks, What's wrong? The pupil sighs heavily, his shoulders slumped forward. The young pupil says he wanted to surprise his big brother when he returns home tomorrow with a book called The Pilgrim's Path. But it is suddenly gone from the bookshop. Before the lecturer can even ask anything, a plane flies overhead and the pupil shoots up out of his chair and says he must go home at once for he cannot be outside when his curfew comes. And just like that, he is gone. The lecturer watches the pupil leave. He didn't even get to ask anything. My friends, wouldn't you know it? We have another small dilemma on our hands. The lecturer cannot let his students bear such heavy burdens. He wants to try to locate the pilgrim's path. He knows Trista has a bookshop and a library at the academy. Or perhaps there's somewhere else to visit. What do you think? We should go and check. And Cephalon. Big book says good ending. Here's a bald decision. The train station? <laughs> That's 
an odd choice, but, well, I technically cannot disobey you. My friends, please follow me. Don't jump off the balcony. You said it. You said it, Hypercube. Just talk, remember, talk and talk don't jump off the railings. Oh, I'll say he jumped arc. over the stairs. Oh, fast traveled. Who fast traveled? Some nerd. I bet. Rista <laughs> Station. Traveling. Oh, Book. I, I don't know what book now. it is. Oh, baby. Oh, I told you. Oh, yes. Book of Woo Baby. Wee Baby. Wee Baby. <laughs> wee baby. <laughs> the Woo is the baby. Yeah, look, it's in stock. Look. Wee Baby. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think oh, it's over there. Do I have my wallet? Do I have my wallet? Yep, I do. Uh, let's see. Give Ten dollars. I mean, uh, <laughs> the story continues. <laughs> the lecturer peers about the open interior of the train station, momentarily overwhelmed by the vastness of the space and echoing noises. He wipes his nose clean of the smoky odor and makes his way to the train station employee at the counter, the same woman as who first greeted him three days gone. The lecturer says he has a rather unconventional question for her, and for some reason he inquires about the man who lives behind the general store. She politely explains that she cannot reveal the travel information of customers and asks if there's anything else she can help him with. The lecturer says, actually, yes. He asks if any books have been left in the train station lately. She thinks for a moment and tells him that, in fact, somebody left a book here earlier today. She goes to the lost property box and asks him for its title to confirm ownership. He says, The Pilgrim's Path. So she hands it over to him, assuming, of course, that he owns the book, and tells him to enjoy the rest of his night. The lecturer thanks her very much for her time. Well, that was too easy, almost. As he turns to leave, he sees someone familiar over in the corner, sitting on his own on a bench, is the young pupil from today's class. What is he doing here, the lecturer wonders. Perhaps he is hopeful that his brother will return early. Perhaps he's wondering how to tell his brother about the present he wasn't able to obtain for him. The lecturer holds the book in both hands and approaches the pupil. Saying nothing, the lecturer holds it forth. The pupil stares in disbelief, his pupils are going wide. He asks if it's for him. The lecturer simply nods. The pupil takes it and looks at it. He turns it over. He cannot believe it. He fights back tears. Thank you, says the pupil. Thank you so much. He jumps to his feet, filled with energy, and says he's going to go somewhere quiet to read it tonight so he and his brother can talk about it again later at length. And he runs out of the train station. The lecturer is left behind feeling very accomplished.
my friends. Now that night has fallen, it is the perfect time to get one final item the lecturer needs to finish his research. He needs an ether crystal. He had one, you see, when he lectured here before, but they confiscated it. He thinks the engineering building is probably trying to make use of it. My friends, kindly follow me. Cube. Got it. The engineering building is quiet. The lecturer stops. He remembers something. He remembers why he waited three days, why he all planned it out like this. Yes. Yes, here comes the moment he has been waiting for. He checks the time and watches the horizon and right on cue, the moon rises, the blood moon, my friends, look, above the back of the academy. Ah, that is definitely not going to fall on this, just like the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> With a quick of a mouse, I'm sure it's appears fine. the red, blood red. Oh, we are on day three, too. Oh, no. Exactly. Now everything can go ahead. Now is the time to act. Tonight is the night. His studies will not be in vain. He must get that ether crystal. Ah, oh, but look here at this sturdy padlock. It stands between us and the crystal. If only he had a hammer and chisel with which he could break it open. No, oh, wait. We already have one. How genius. One hit, two hits, and the padlock falls to the ground with a clang. And everybody, let's creep inside. Easy peasy, peasy lemon squeezy. Wait! I see no lemons. It is? It's a cotton candy machine. Look at it. It just looks like it. It, smell, it oh, smells man. like candy. You're a cotton candy machine. Variety. Yes. Smells like In a way, I am. Touche. Do you have the van too? <laughs> so separately. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not too expensive, though. Right here, my friends. Jammed inside this cotton candy machine. Right where he thought it would be, the lecturer peers about the engineering building and snatches the crystal back. He sneers. Mm, he's sure they don't even know how to use the thing. The fools. Yeah, well, I mean, they're using... now candy. it's back well, in his hands and he can finally finish his research. My friends, Let's step outside. Make sure the coast is still clear.
Well, I'll scoop some of the cotton candy. They, they, they put it inside yeah, the cotton candy it. machine. Eww. They don't know what they're doing. I took some of the cotton candy from the machine. I put it in that's the worst. I mean, if they're using the ether crystal for the cotton candy, that's got to be some damn good cotton candy. <laughs> Totally. Or it's a really well built made, well built machine. I don't know. I think some. I think some of the ether crystal actually got into the cotton candy machine because uh, I can taste it. Oh. Ether candy. Yeah. The encephalon has observed your choices, travelers. However, it will not allow any deviations from the mimetic recordings. Thus. The story continues. On leaving the engineering building, there stands a figure, the delinquent. Stepping out a cigarette, he asks what the lecturer was doing in the engineering shed. After all the lecturer did for him, he feels comfortable sharing. And so he says, He's about to try and finish his special research project. And just as he hoped, the delinquent asks if he can help. The lecturer smiles from ear to ear and happily accepts the assistance. The lecturer explains that he needs the keys to the old schoolhouse, which are normally kept near the groundskeeper's shed on the academy field. The delinquent, of course, knows the keys he's talking about. So the pair head across the grounds. The delinquent has joined the party. Due to the delinquent size, they are pretty. They are very good at sneaking. Their sneak stat is is immaculate. I'm like extravagant. So far, we have one warlock and one rogue. That's not bad. Well, well wow. Great one, okay, not bad for well, makeup. Typecasting at its finest. Uh, Are we all here? I think so. I can't really tell. Shindizo is missing. Uh. Riders, the lecturer, and the delinquent arrive at the groundskeeper's shed. Someone exits the building. The groundskeeper's daughter, the student from the second day. She is surprised to see them both as she carries a heavy box outside. The delinquent offers to take it from her, and she explains that she spoke with her parents and is helping them out more, and they are supporting her more in return. The lecturer is very happy to hear this, and then asks what they're both doing out here. The lecturer explains to her that he needs the keys to the old schoolhouse so he can get back to his old research project. She gives him a curious look, but after all he did for her, she trusts him and hands him the keys from inside the shed. But only if she accompanies them. To keep an eye on the keys, of course. The lecturer predicted this, and is more than happy to accept her company. And so, the three of them head to the old schoolhouse. My friends, the student has joined the party. Team morale has been boosted tenfold. <laughs> No, now it's actually not a, a good thing because now we have and a rogue and a uh, hmm. good morale. <laughs> oh, Tiarma is still over there. Hey. Oh, well, now the experience oh, points are split three okay. ways, so we got a a banjo <laughs> XP hmm. share. It's pretty easy to activate. Well, yeah, yeah but now gone. we have the XP split amongst every oh, people. Oh, we're moving. You just have one part but of every single right?
Yeah, but if everybody gets the experience points, it's a little more grind, but everybody levels up equally. And then we're all stronger. Best to, best to have a stronger team to have one strong person. What methods work? You're only as strong as your weakest member, though. You okay, Cypher? <laughs> The... Okay. Has anyone X gone through? The old schoolhouse stands like a slate fortress in an overgrown forest. Its dark, solemn walls complement the gloom of night. Fragments of windows reflect glimmering stars. The night sky turns slowly overhead, filled with wonder and brilliance. The lecturer approaches tentatively. Dark birds take off from an alcove. His heart races. Finally, he's finally back. He can finish what he started all those years ago. Wait a moment. Who is that over there? Why, could it be? Yes, it's the pupil sitting under a tree reading a book using a small light. The pupil looks up at the same time and comes over to the group. He asks what they're all doing here, and the lecturer says he's going to finish an old research project from thirty years ago, and would be happy to have some company. The pupil looks at the delinquent, and then at the student, and then at the lecturer, and he agrees to join them. After all, look at what the lecturer did for him. The lecturer inserts the key, turns it until it clicks, and slowly pushes the door open until it doesn't anymore. Ah, oh, it's only open a little. Something is jammed, something is stuck. He tries to reach in to fill it from the other side, but the pupil speaks up. He can fit through that gap easily, he offers, and he squeezes through inside alone before anyone can say otherwise. A few moments later, and he clears the way from the other side, and the old wooden doors slowly swing inward. This way, friends. The pupil. Pupil's definitely a barbarian. The people has joined the party. Morale and intelligence oh, and dexterity has, has been increased. Uh. It will when we go in the elevator room. The interior uh, is gloomier than the outside. The air, stale and dusty. It's evident that nobody has been here for some time. The lecturer closes the door behind them. The sounds of the night slowly fading away. Only sullen silence greets them. Well, says the lecturer, Let's get moving, shall we? Right this way, through these doors. Okay. It'll play the music again when we get here. Oh, never mind. What? Hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize I was actually a wolf. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't realize that before. Yep, it is a pit. 100% a hole.
Ah, what yes, the soul smells cold. Um, don't know what you had. All four of them yeah, there he stand is. in awe of the peculiar chamber. They proceed carefully, their footfalls slowly shuffling across the dusty floor, every little noise echoed and thrown back at them. The lecturer steps onto the elevator platform in the middle and approaches the control on the far side. As he uses the ether crystal to activate the elevator, he explains to the three that there was a poison leak on the seventh floor, and he has prepared antidotal medicine so that none of them would be affected. The delinquent, the student, and the pupil all take some of the medicine each. The lecturer pretends to take medicine. One by one, the three students fall unconscious, and the elevator begins to descend. My friends, please click on the bottom button. Go to floor seven. Hey, Nick. <laughs> My music is still the normal lecture music. No music. Is it really? Because I, I teleported to the I old school house, and apparently that happens. And so if you instead of if you like just walk through it, I'll be right back. Uh, so I can no fix that. At all. I don't. I don't. I mean, like if you want if you want to, if you want to hear, it, it's called mysterious old school house in the sound setting. So. Is there supposed to be music right now? Oh, well, yeah, yeah but... Uh, it's supposed to autoplay when you go... The, the music door. is about to change anyway. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're not getting any music. You'll get some in a second. Do you have your world volume mm. up? I do. Yes, it is currently silent, fear not. Guessing it's a bug? No. Uh, it's you. No, it's on purpose. This part is silent. Oh. Everything is in order. The portal has opened as anticipated, and the deep chamber buzzes with mysterious energy. The hairs on the back of his neck stand up, but the portal is not quite ready yet. No, there are other steps that must be taken first. One by one, he drags the three youths to the next room. Bum, bum, bum. I say dramatic beaver, but I'm not a beaver, so it doesn't make sense. No, it's with a dramatic reverb. Yeah. Dramatic beaver? I've never heard of that before. Chipmunk. I've always thought they said dramatic beaver, but it's dramatic reverb. Dramatic chipmunk. Ba, 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 mm. dramatic chipmunk. <laughs> No more grief hint. It smells dirty.
okay. Did he waiting or did Trajan crash again? Um. Well. Oh. Oh. Well, why are we still here? You know they're still here. Oh, okay. he is here. I think there. I think um. Uh, there's still some more. Uh, I'm having technical difficulties. Oh. The alternate four seven teleporter is not working for Rendizo and Coffee. Oh. Huh. I disabled and enabled them. Ah. Uh, that makes sense. Well, oh, sort of. Hold up. You want We're me to go the check? Good guys, right? I can't really tell. Please do. Okay. Apologies, friends. A few minutes to sort this out. He's fine. <laughs> Gives me enough time to eat this, eat, yeah. um, eat more of the cotton candy from the um, uh, from the workshop. I don't know. Did you guys go the long way? We got lost into the dimensions. <laughs> hmm. All good, Trajan. Oh. Sniper. You're good. At the far end of the room, kneeling like a bronze statue, is a mech. A relic of distant civilization. A monument to technologies he cannot begin to fathom. With the three unconscious youths beside him, the lecturer stares up at it. Everything is in place. He waits. And he waits. And he waits. And under his breath he pleads for something to happen. He did all this work. He waited all this time. He didn't ever tell a single soul. And he couldn't bear to... There, a glimmer in the eyes, a flash of blue. Is it working? Is it time? As he stares into the glowing blue eyes, the lecturer sees flashes of the past. He can see the first time he was allowed to explore the old schoolhouse, built on top of the sunken archaeological site. He can see him and his assistant figuring out the elevator. He can see the, the portal opening unexpectedly. And he can see... Oh, he can see it. He can hear it, its sudden voice, its eerie, soothing voice. It offered them both knowledge. It promised ancient technology, the secrets of the universe, the functions of reality. And it asked for only one thing. A pilot. The lecturer falls to his knees in disbelief after thirty years. He is finally back here. As the eyes gently glow, the lecturer speaks. I have returned as promised. And in response, a voice fills the room. You have returned. I have. I have returned, and I... I hope you remember the deal we had. My memory is not distorted by time. I have waited long for you to be here for this moment. 
it was not easy, but I did manage to find three replacements. You wish to replace your assistant, your own son, with another? So be it. I am listening. The lecturer stares at the bronze machine. His son, his child, is right there, somewhere beneath layers of cold steel. He tries to picture him. What might he look like after all these years? Has he aged? Is he conscious? Is he listening? Does he still have hope like he does? A shiver runs through the old man's body. He thinks long about the decision. He looks at the three students being nearby that he manipulated into coming down here. Who to choose? He knows what he must do. I have made my decision he says to the bronze machine. Take me. You would offer yourself in exchange for your own son? So be it. The lecturer feels a pull in the back of his mind, a tug at his body, a calling to move his legs. His legs carry him slowly to the bronze machine. His heart slams against his ribs. The chest of the bronze mech clicks loudly and hisses as a seal is broken. And then the hatch slowly opens revealing a desiccated corpse sitting in the pilot's seat. The lecturer cries out, but his legs are no longer his own. He is being moved against his will as tendrils of shadow wrap around him. Your son is dead. He did not last long. He was not a worthy vessel. Which means it must have been you I sensed on that day. Your son's blood is not your own. What, what do you mean, my son? We adopted him, but why do you want my blood? It is too late, old man. You possess what is rightfully mine, and I shall take it back by force. The room shudders. Shadows grow in the corners as the structure groans. The lecturer can no longer feel his own body. He can barely feel anything as he steps onto the bronze machine's platform. Only two thoughts run through his mind. First, that he did all this for his son who had died so long ago. And second, that he has made the wrong choice, a most terrible choice. Something awakens within him. The bronze machine about to consume him, that something changes, adjusts, manipulates ever so slightly the probability state of this reality. And he wakes up. Not the lecturer. The delinquent wakes up. Skeptical by nature, he only had a little bit of medicine. He sits up and looks around. Well, where is he? 
What is this place? What is that awful noise? He can see two other students beside him. He shakes them awake and they see the lecturer with his head wreathed in strange shadows, slowly moving towards some sort of bronze statue. And he remembers. The student suggests that this is the archaeological site in the ancient ruin deep beneath what was once Trista's quarry. The pupil stands up and looks around, this is bad, he says. We have to do something. My friends, this is your final quest. In this room is a bronze mech, the hatch wide open. It has a set of cables leading to it from an unknown device. And four of the blue braziers have lit up with electric energy, seemingly charging attacks. The lecturer has shadows wrapped around his legs and head, pulling him toward the bronze mech. He is but four steps away. What you must do is separate yourselves into three groups. Those who represent the delinquent stand here. Those who represent the student stand here. And those who represent the pupil stand here. Make your choice now. Okay. Delinquent. Student. Belt, but and the pupil. Okay. Please stand in one of the three groups. I am actually uh, annoyed that these are actually off center. Yeah. 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 Delinquent. You're actually off center. This is the last time we'll get to solve this mystery for like a year, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. What so, about what the shiny green beetle does? What it does, does. yeah. My friends, okay. listen carefully. You must work together. Remember the clues. And you could end all of this with a few well-coordinated moves. However, if you fail, everyone could die here tonight. Delinquent, this is your inventory. You have a lighter, a pocket knife, and a fishing lure. Use your imagination. Student, you, you have a hand shovel. The keys to the old schoolhouse, and a hairbrush. Hmm. Pupil, you have the book for your brother, a yo-yo, and a flashlight. My friends, you have two minutes to figure out what you want to do, and if you want, you can coordinate with other groups. Your time starts... Yeah, that's what I mean. No. So, so we're trying to do the beetle thing like we did a couple weeks ago? Uh, yes. Although, uh, the flashlight can dispel some of the darkness. That's in, that will be important for later. We have That's what I'm thinking. A later, can or... Do the same thing, and, um... <laughs> what are we going for? The shiny green beetle. Well, yeah, just say we're gonna try to open the the lecturer's bag. I'm gonna tell them to do something. Okay. Okay. All right. In front of the lecturer's head, and that like takes up a lot of shit. That's what I was thinking. Free lecturer. Oh my god, we had to treat him like a fucking baby. <laughs> And it Actually, mentioned at the beginning that the jingle was like, the I rest. feel like a dog or something. Oh, here. right. Yeah, I realized that. Yeah, no, what's the moment? And boop the piano aficionado. Because he said that at the beginning. Like, literally the first one. Yeah. Jingle, jingle, jingle. We're gonna get in the habit of one. Yeah. Who is AFK? Ah. <sighs> Alright, so, them jingling the keys 
And then, oh, I need to tell them to do stuff. You have a pocket knife? I think you can cut one of the lines of the brazier's, uh, and that will stop them from, like, shooting at us temporarily or something like that, or stop one of them from shooting at us. Whoa, my friends, your time is up. <laughs> Delinquent. What is your plan? Control the encephalon. <laughs> Did you just... Control wow. the encephalon? <laughs> You're using the pocket knife to... Which wires are you speaking of, please? Pocket knife on wire. Thank you. Student, what is your cunning, cunning plan? So obvious, I felt stupid. Well, jingle the keys jingle in his face like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> jingle the keys in the lecturer's face like a baby. Do you mean that you're acting like a baby or the lecturer is like a baby? Our knife. No, the lecturer is like a baby. We're trying to jingle the keys. Very distracting. well. Key face jingle. <laughs> Pupil. We're going to reach into the lecturer's bag and find that shiny green beetle. We're going to reach into the lecturer's bag and find that shiny green beetle. We are, we are not we really want this shiny green beetle. Calculating outcomes. Let's do dance. What the music's good. Ty Lincoln Arcus is good too. This is what happens. Well The student, no, the delinquent, this one, taking the pocket knife in hand, he hurries toward those big cables. And? He cuts one of the cables successfully with his pocket knife. But the power going through the cable melts the knife rendering it now useless. Having caught one cable, there are only three braziers now illuminated. The student takes the keys, runs up to the lecturer and jingles them in front of his face. But the lecturer's face is wreathed in shadow, and he cannot see or, or hear. What? Oh, you gotta use the... okay, yeah. You gotta light it up first. Oh. I don't remember the... The pupil. Here. Shut up. That's true. That's what you get for listening to the rat. The pupil is... doing... something. Yeah. I've got it. I'll remember. Give me a moment. Uh, ah, yes, the lecturers are uh, the beetle, yes. The pupil runs up to the lecturer who is being pulled toward the mech. He reaches into the bag and he pulls out a shiny green beetle. Oh, yes. How spectacular. <laughs> Look at this bar. However, one, two, three. The remaining three braziers unleash their charged attacks. Bang, bang, bang! Each student wow. is knocked out. The lecturer is pulled forward. He is now three steps away. And because all students were knocked out and missed a turn, the lecturer is now two steps away. My friends, you have two rounds left. Two minutes starting now. 
Okay. So. I mean, we can take the cheeky way out. All three braziers are illuminated with a charge. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be in step one helping us out. Hello, Muffy. You're a snake man. Uh, I wish we had some pockets, and. Or else I'm just gonna shove some ether cotton candy in his mouth. <laughs> Briefcase. I mean, worst case scenario, we have to kick the electric folk uh, all. Okay, and the lighter can dispel the, the shadow tendrils that are on his legs, I believe. Uh, we're gonna use the flashlight to, right. to shine the, the light in his face. Right. Uh, hopefully, gonna, and then right, make sure we specify that, that we're going after them. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be finding my own headset. Yeah, I mean, jingle the key. You mean you're going yeah. before after us, them. right? Yes, we're going so, before us, we're gonna specify. Okay. So the lighter is, so what's the delinquent <laughs> doing with the lighter? He's gonna um, make the shadow tendrils on his legs go away. Ah, uh, legs, okay. Your planning time is over. Now, I hear that you want to coordinate things a little differently. Which group is going first this time? Uh, they should. They should go. Delinquent through. still. Yeah. Delinquent. What are you doing? Collecting action. Lighter. The 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 shadow hand thing. Yeah. Ah, uh, you're using the lighter on the shadows and the face. Is that correct? No. Wait. Correct. Select action. No, that the that legs. Mm. <laughs> the, the, the legs. Light. The face. The legs. The light, You're the light. using the lighter on the shadows on the lecturer's legs. Thank yeah. you. And who's next? Select action. Right. Legs. And the pupil. We're going to be shining pupil? the flashlight. We're going to be shining the flashlight on the shadows on the lecturer's face. Ah, oh, a, a leg right and here. face combo. That brings back memories. And student, what are you doing? <laughs> We're jingling what? the keys on his face like a little baby, successfully this time. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Well, just because you add the word successfully doesn't mean I'll let you succeed, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Calculating <laughs> outcome. We got Encephalon on our side. We got Big Brain. It's Big Brain mode. Yeah, except we're all gonna get knocked out for the next turn. Uh, all right. This is what happens. Planning together. Quickly. The pupil and the delinquent, each with a source of light. Go for the shadows that wreathe the lecturer's head and legs. The connection between him and the bronze mech. Both attempts are successful, but in response, the shadow destroys both the lighter and the flashlight. Yeah. Finishing the combo, the student runs up and jingles the keys in front of the lecturer's exposed face. He... Oh, he comes too. He looks around. What? 
What's what's happening? He is very confused. Why are they helping him? He just tried to... Well, it doesn't matter. Now that he's conscious, he assesses the situation. The bronze mech is still there. He is two steps away. There are three braziers about to attack. The bronze mech groans with movement. The mech itself reaches forward and opens its hand and a steel grappling rope bursts out and wraps itself around the lecturer's middle, continuing to pull him toward the mech. The lecturer, however, can still speak. He will offer advice to anybody who wants to take it if they speak to him. However, all three braziers bang, 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 fire charges of electricity at the students, stunning them all for a round, and Electra is pulled forward, now only one step away. And because everyone is stunned, oh, no. another round passes oh, with you able to do nothing. And as we all know, one minus one is two. There are two steps <laughs> remaining, friends. You have two minutes okay. to, to decide what you're going to do for the next round. Thank you for bringing step one. All right. Deal with the brazier. Deal with the brazier. I want to find out what that green beetle does from, all, from the lecture. What? <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, we just sure. blow the brazier. Just blow it out like a candle. Uh, on my end, I'm tr I can't. I can barely hear you. Knock brace here on what? Uh, I. Oh, I don't. Know. I think every time we tried to knock it onto a wire, it didn't knock actually it go onto a wire. Can we knock it onto the grass or wire then? The, the braziers are nowhere near the wires. The yes. wires are down here. Okay. Yes, and it doesn't. It also doesn't work on the grappler, on the grapple wire. It just oh, like oh. gets flung off of it because it's fairly strong. Poor oh, chance. Oh. Yep. I got an idea. Pocket sand. No. Uh, okay. Um. We don't have sand. Oh yes. Let me refresh your inventories. The delinquent has a fishing lure. The student has a hairbrush, keys, and a shovel. Lure. And the pupil has the pilgrim's path. A yo-yo and a shiny green beetle. Oh, uh, and the lecturer you can also use has more items on him. to cut one of the other oh. wires. Yes, a, a shovel, you know, the shovel can cut one of the wires for the braziers, I believe, and then this one of them can be knocked <laughs> over. I actually know it requires yeah, like... to knock a brazier over. I just remembered. Have you ever done gardening and then you shove your uh, shovel into the dirt and then you realize that you've hit the internet cable for your house? My friends, oh, your geez. planning time yeah. has expired. Which student is going first? Yeah, you're fine. Um, uh, I don't think it matters. No particular much, order. I've... Delinquent. What are you doing? I'm questioning real quick. What was the name of the group over there? I cannot read. Uh, what? Student and pupil. What did you say? You're terribly quiet. So us and the pupil, I think, are knocking over it. I... We, we are, we're unable to hear you. No, the pupil is... Delinquent and pupil else. are pushing over a brazier pillar, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, I, is that true? I told them to use the pupil, shovel to cut a wire. Pupil, do you Oh, are we the pupil? I had some- no, they're talking about yes, this group over here. Huh? Student. <laughs> you're okay, the pupil. Well, Damn it. Well, I knew what the plan am I? We're students. I, I told them to use a shovel We're on a brazier, they're and delinquent. then I said deal with yeah. it. I didn't no, no, the planning time is over. Idea. Planning time yeah. is over. Okay, so what well, we're gonna do- Delinquent you know. is attempting to push it over with the pupil. Student, what are you oh. doing? 
We're gonna cut a wire with the show. Cutting a wire with? Cutting a wire with the show. The, the hand shovel. With the hand shovel. Very well. And pupil. What are you I guess doing? we're gonna help push over a brave here. So, do you want to go to the green beetle? Yeah. The green beetle is gonna come last, apparently. Because we can't. Because <laughs> we were told we were to do something else. Well, you can't do you think really anything in the past matters here them. now? No, it doesn't. We're throwing our game. Calculating outcomes. Now, boys, you got this. We got this. Four of the insufferable. Two of them, not all three. Not that motherfucking thing. We actually <laughs> lose this no matter what, technically, but the insufferable gonna help us. This is true. Well, no, because the brazier, the one remaining brazier, will knock knock out any one. This of is what happens. Mm. Yeah, and you the delinquent and their pupil. Team up, and together they charge, shoulder barge, one of the pillows that holds up one of the braziers, with tremendous effort, and the delinquent honestly doing most of the work. They manage to topple <laughs> one of the strange weaponized pillows. There are two braziers remaining. The student takes the weaponized trowel in hand, and runs toward where the cables are between the mech and the machine. And she slams the trowel down, which of course is melted by the tremendous energy. However, another cable is severed, meaning that there is only one brazier remaining. It launches its attack toward... Was that a dice? The pupil. Bang! The pupil is stunned oh, for a round. Rip. We don't get to. We will um, never. Yeah. We will never find out what this the lecturer being told us. is. Pulled one step closer, going from two to thirteen steps. <laughs> you have two minutes to decide what to do on your next round. Okay. Well, Trey's been killing us. I get out. I get out. Yeah, and it's not one. Hi, Jinx. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well then. Encephalon. I have. Oh, I have. Yeah, I know yeah, what I want to do. Confused with your ways. Ask about the shiny green beetle. Yeah. Except for stun. Round so. Yeah. yeah. Can we borrow the uh, inventory of another student? Simple one for the win. Yep. <laughs> well, I think. I mean, I think we could just ask have. the lecturer, "Hey, what's the green beetle you know for?" Because that's what we were supposed to do. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm like, for fuck's sake. No, no. <laughs> uh, there's gotta be something we did this stage. No. No, we don't. Oh, thunder. Charge, Lovely. Now we have to fight back with the grapple. Oh, yeah. Oh, really uh, I got this. Pocket sand. <laughs> One. No, we need oh, all three of any. us to be up. How are you supposed so to beat this normally the, the first raises, time? Right? Yes. You don't. Because we need all three of us <laughs> up for that last part. Yeah, no, but like, how are you. Yeah. Yeah, how were they supposed to achieve a good ending the first time? Yes. You are knocking over the last brazier? Sure. I mean, we got an extra turn, why not? <laughs> uh, trial and error, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an extra uh, 13 turns, but to knock down that last extra one nonetheless. Before it's too late. <laughs> yeah, but when, before the, before the 13 I'm steps wrong. are up. Thank you, Insufferable. As <laughs> usual, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, alright. Welcome to the Travelers. Trial and error is a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> Your planning time is up. Delinquent, what is your plan for this round? There are only 13 rounds left. Knock over the last breeze here. Coordinate with the student. Knock over the last brazier. Okay, well, Student, I guess they decided for do us. you consent? Action select. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Very well. Yeah. Yep. Pupil, is there anything you would like to think about doing, just in case? Uh, <laughs> I'm asking the, the lecturer what, the, what this green beetle does. Very well. Or how it helps.
I'm a... Alright, can you say this? I need to cut my bald. Disclaimer. Everything you're about to hear for the remainder of this battle is not canonical. Well... <laughs> The what? power of the encephalon. Thank the delinquent you. and the student team up once more, leaving the pupil lifeless on the ground like good friends. And they run toward the brazier <laughs> and shoulder it, <laughs> toppling it over. Whoa. Smash onto the ground it goes, and there are no braziers attacking left. They're all broken or disabled. The pupil realizes wait no he's fine <laughs> he goes to the <laughs> lecturer flash wound. and asks Ouch. him holding the green beetle the lecturer please what does this beetle do and the lecturer looks Look at, at him bug. as though he's asked the stupidest question <laughs> 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 the lecturer says, eat it. I love it. I'm sorry, what? And the lecturer <laughs> is pulled one step closer, going from 13 to 8 steps okay. from the mech. Oh. You have two minutes to decide what to do okay. on your next round. Oh, we eating beer too much? Yeah, 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 because I'm gonna go all the fucking way with this shit. It's gonna be like this. I believe we feed him the beetle. Can we at least... We try to whip up some spices so the beetle is easier to eat. We're gonna make the best fucking food that the beetle can make. If this is gonna make the finale for all the seasoned trades and bread about the time you make the beetle, I'm gonna go all the way over every insect. Well, should we make a candied beetle or a fried beetle dish? Fried candy yeah, beetle. Any green beetles on them in real life? Mm. It's like really good experience. <laughs> Ask the <laughs> <ant. laughs> Uh, we are going to hell for making fried candy beetle. Well, it seems the planning has come to an end. Delinquent, what are you doing this round? to work together with the pupil and the student to grab onto the lecturer and try to pull him away. Very well. We'll see what the other groups are trying to do. Student, what are you doing? I was thinking of fried candy beetle. Yes, that is uh, cheer on the, the pupil as he devours the beetle like a chad. I mean, we could just yeah, insult the encephalon. <laughs> if we're not sure. No, 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 we do not insult the encephalon. He's saving our ass. No, it's like, it's like oh. insult. Oh, consult. Kitty, a good idea. You're reaching into the lecturer's bag and taking out the ether crystal. Very well. Let's see what the pupil is doing. You're eating the beetle. Yeah. An interesting one. <laughs> Calculating outcomes. The bullshit Fried candy beetle. Yeah. Fried candy beetle. Eat the beetle. All right. Serious mode. I can't see. Ain't got all day, buddy. Crap, I can't see. The delinquent takes command, suggesting with colorful language that they should all together physically hold back the lecturer, pulling him away from the bronze mech's tremendous grasp. 
However, the student runs up to the lecturer and instead of taking hold of him, grabs hold of the blue ether crystal in his bag. She takes it out. It's tremendous power emanating, pure blue light filling the room. And she looks at the pupil, who makes direct eye contact with her as he throws back the shiny green beetle, crunches it in his mouth, and swallows it. And it is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and? What it's a red herring. Except it's what do you mean, what beetle. happened? Well, the lecturer is pulled from eight steps down to four steps. You have two minutes to decide what to do. <laughs> okay, uh, we're all falling in. We're all falling in. We're all falling in. Oh my god! Oh god. Right. <laughs> How about we push him? Let's push him closer. <laughs> Let's just throw him yeah, into the mix. Yeah, it turns out there wasn't actually anything else to find in the lecture. I mean, how old did Nick just yeah, make a to be honest? No, that's his legs. <laughs> what the oh. what is, why does why does he have such a man that the legs is like they're at the shoulders? <laughs> yeah. I, I asked and, and I asked Trajan, what's the what's the shiny green beetle for? And he was like, well, I'm you should you just wait until you do the I'm the fight again. And I'm, I'm like, okay. Nick. And then nothing happens. <laughs> it was a red herring. Very well. I think that's enough time to come to terms with what's happened. Delinquent, what are you doing? <laughs> <Some with her. laughs> We're going to attempt what we did again. We're, We're going to pull the lecture. To pull the lecture with everyone. I see. Student, what are you doing? We're gonna grab the lecturer and pull. Very well. And pupil, what are you doing? Very well. And then hoping that calculating outcome. We're going to turn into Beatman, man or beetle. The delinquent once more calls his two fellow students to help him pull back the lecturer. Surely, together with their combined physical might, they... Wait. Where did they go? The delinquent can't see the student or the pupil. No. Instead... Standing in the student's place, powered by the ether crystal. Is that... Is that Goku? Goodness me. And over here, where the student, no, the pupil was standing, is a giant <laughs> green beetle. Oh, oh, fantastic! The <laughs> three of them run up to the lecturer and using the strength of a giant beetle and Super Saiyan Goku and, well, this guy. Well, that's gonna take the UFO so to get to the next and step. Pull. <laughs> yeah, why did we choose Goku? <laughs> Be the here forever! So very strong, <laughs> oh no! But the students are stronger. Are they oh. persevere. They are superpowered. There's a sudden noise. The cable loses its grip and 
It comes loose. All four of them topple away from the bronze mech. No, I will not be stopped by three children and an old man. I will not. The lecturer is helped to his feet by his students, his friends, and he stands the, against the huge machine defiantly. I was ready to exchange myself for my own son, he says, feeling the support of those around him. But I see it now. The feeling you described, that sense you perceived, this has happened before. This power, your portal, Abel, is closing without you. What? Nonsense. I planned everything out. I have enough time to... Wait. No. Why? Why is it closing? What did you do? <laughs> the bronze mech grinds and shifts, suddenly standing tall, scraping the ceiling with its protrusions. Using the last of its energy reserves, it lunges forward, leaping over them all, and rushing to the portal across the hall. The students watch in fear. The lecturer observes with a smile, for he already knows what's about to happen. The bronze mech makes it to the portal, but only halfway before it is snapped shut. There's a pause in all of reality, a visual vacuum, a rippling of the air, and an explosion of sound and debris as the back half of the bronze mech explodes. The lecturer catches a glimpse of dark shadow ether being sucked into the last vanishing point of the portal. They all breathe a sigh of relief, except the lecturer. We must get out now, he says, and everything begins to shudder. The structure begins to shake. Hundreds of thousands of tons are threatening to crush them all. My friends, quickly to the exit! What? Oh no, it's like, it's like, it's like, Goku, we gotta get out of here! <laughs> so ridiculous! I'm wondering my orb. I can't, I can't find, I can't see. It's still on disable. Autoplay. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're running. You're not supposed to run. You look at daytime. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Praise the cube. I, I don't know if the cube is there. I'm 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 guessing. You're correct. Yeah, he's still there. All here. Thank you. My friends, fellow travelers, the canonical portion of the story continues. Yes, please take this moment 
to open your world menus for this world. That's tab, or if you're in VR, press the menu button with your right hand above your head. Navigate to the sound menu. Sound. And play Whereabouts of Feelings. It is halfway oh, down no. the song list. Yeah, it's in the middle. Whereabouts of Feelings. Under... There we go. Sound of the rainfall. Yes. Yep, yeah, underneath that. Though. Above that study. Why is the blood not Oh, we didn't disable it yet. The four of them rush outside, turning in time to see the old schoolhouse collapse in on itself. They take cover from the shockwave of dust, and once the rubble settles, the lecturer stands. There it all goes. Thirty years of waiting. Thirty years of wanting nothing but to see his son again. Thirty years of torment finally come to a close. The bronze mix remains. His son all lost deep below the earth once more. The blood moon has shifted out of its position. The threat is gone. He turns to his students. I'm so very sorry. I was blind. I wanted my son back so badly, but none of you deserved to die for that. I have done a most monstrous thing. He closes his eyes as he begins to weep. I promised I would make things right, but I failed him. I couldn't keep my promise. And now he's not here anymore. Please, do not forgive me. There comes no reply. Until he feels a set of arms wrap around him. And then another, and then another. Memories drift, flood into his mind. Their first time meeting his son at the orphanage. So precious, so shy. Memories of his first birthday, nine years old, spent with a loving family. Memories of all the time the lecturer spent at the hospital, comforting his wife and son. And then, just he and his son, comforting one another. Memories of his son's first day at the academy, first as a student, and then as his assistant, and only friend. The lecturer is scared, scared of letting these memories change. Letting them go. 
He tries to hold on to them. He tries to maintain control. But then, he realizes that if you try to hold your breath, you just end up losing it. And as he lets it out, with it, tears flow. And that is where they stand, sharing in their bittersweet victory. After a long silence, the lecturer speaks. I think I'm done with teaching, he says. The students look up at him, asking what he would do with his time instead. Well, says the lecturer, I've always had an interest in archaeology. My friends, my good dear friends, please allow me to congratulate you on your victory. You have reached the good ending of the lecture. Well done, everyone, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Goku, the beetle, and some dude. Goku, giant fucking bug. Don't forget about some dude. That guy. <laughs> Just some wow, dude. That guy. <laughs> My friends. <laughs> yes. Please allow me to place you back in the good care of Sheen. He has some announcements for you. Wait, before we do that. <laughs> Group photo time. Yeah. yeah. Oh. How about here? I I can't really I see. I'm looking. It's somebody's birthday tomorrow. <gasps> no. Oh. 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 I don't know. My friends, here's my idea. The world creator, Pimon Nick Pop One Two Three, is here among us. Don't say it. I think we should take a picture while we're all singing "Happy Birthday to Nick." What say you? Yes. I, ha I will sing the blame yes. happy birthday. Uh, I can't so see. Come stand on these steps of the pile of rubble. I... Please, a photographer. Is there a photographer who can Man, capture this moment? Uh, Ether, um, where are you? Yep, I got it. Ether Memento is our photographer. My friends, stand oh, here crap. upon these steps. Um, uh, um, we will sing in this fall trade. I, I can't. You're right, man. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> um, don't mind me, I, I'm currently blind. Are you up the step? Stop. Okay. I'm Stop. Well, legally blind to me, actually. Perfect, right there, right, right there. there. Stay right there. Okay. Perfect. You're blind and you're okay. perfect. Ethan, are you ready? Let me turn my safety settings off so everyone can get their avatars in. Take a can moment to load everything, yes. All right. I'm kind of guessing where the camera is. You know what? Close enough. After the picture, you're, I'm going to reset my uh, VR. And just look straight okay. ahead. You're good, Delta. Are we ready? Sure. Yes, we are. Ready, right. Senpai. Very well. <laughs> On the count of three. We're ready, Sensei. We'll sing Happy Birthday to Nick. One, two, three. Happy Birthday to you.
Later, you I beautiful can. bastard. Aw, oh, thank you. What is this? Happy birthday, Pion. And thank you for all the effort you put into these. Thank you. Yes. Yes. No problem. Is the picture taken? Yes, the picture has been taken. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. That is a good question. Photographer, was the picture taken successfully? That is a confirmed, Gene. Oh. Picture was taken successfully. <laughs> Thank you, Ether. That's a new one. Thank, Thank you. Friends. Thank you, photographers. You are glorious. And Nick. Thank you for creating this space <laughs> where we can all have fun together and create so many well, memories. I'm giving you head pads. Well, like, I'm, I'm trying sir. to. Thank you. You did it successfully. Uh, You're welcome. Right. I should really try to play um, Trials of Cold Steel. Oh, you Travelers. Can. That's correct. Did you know that Trails of Cold Steel and the Trails series itself is very dear to Nick? And if you do get a chance to check it out, you won't regret it. I highly recommend you talk to Nick about the series and Take a look. With that being Trails. said, friends, we are VR Travelers. And this has been the final showing for the lecture, at least for a long while. Thank you so much for staying here with us. And thank you so much for creating another memorable night. Tonight was pretty fun, to say the least. It was chaotic enough. Praise the cube. Praise the cube. Praise the cube. Praise be to the hyper cube. Praise the cube. Praise the cube. Praise Goku. Praise Shiny and some dude. Normally, I would say other things at this point, but I'm going to say something different this time. The world builders, like Nick, are the backbone of what we do. Without them, we wouldn't have ground to walk on. So, travelers. Take some time to appreciate Nick and Rendizo. They are working extremely hard behind the scenes on multiple tours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's put our hands together for world builders. Oh, thank you! Hey, Prince be joy. My hands hurt. Ah. I don't want to destroy my controller. <laughs> Well, friends, if you want to support those world builders, you know where our info channel is in the Discord. Our Patreon money goes to them for commissions. Well then, friends, I'll open a portal to the after party in about five minutes from now. Until then, the floor is yours. That is a, that is a, that is a good enough time for me to um, uh, res um, reset my VR. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, happy, happy birthday.